Hi, and welcome to Georgia Medical Academy's AEMT program. Again, this is Tom Campline, your instructor for this evening. And I'm going to be focusing for the next few minutes on the AEMT training and licensure requirements. Uh, just like any other program that requires a specific curriculum to go through, you have some specific training requirements that you will have to meet. And to begin with, whoop, where did we go? We just jumped through a bunch of slides, didn't we? All right, there we are. We are going to focus on emergency care to sick and injured patients. But also, I want you to keep in mind, too, that all our patients are not on the extreme end of being sick continuum. Sometimes they're on the other end of not being so sick, but they still deserve care as well, right? So some of our patients can be in extreme life-threatening situations while only others might need a ride to the hospital. However, they all need good professional care delivered in a timely manner. So some of the discussions or t subjects that we're going to talk about in upcoming lessons are going to be the scene size up. We need to really focus on that. I know we have been hammered throughout our EMT training about scene size up, patient assessment, packaging and treatment, and so on. But we're going to revisit these topics as we're going forward. Packaging the patient, yeah, you know, packaging hasn't changed. It's the same for the EMT as it is for the EMTA, as it is for the EMT intermediate, as it is for the EMT basic, as it is for the paramedic. But we still need to revisit it, and it needs to be done in a professional way. And we're also going to touch on EMS as a career, because EMS now is a career. When I started in EMS, the only thing you could do was ride on an ambulance, or ride on a fire truck and then be a supervisor for an ambulance service or you could move up in the fire service. The fire service had more flexibility, the fire service had more pathways, but now that's changing. EMS has grown, EMS is still growing and changing and evolving, and yes, the fire service still has some great pathways for you to go to. I'd recommend the fire service to people. Also recommend the uh, EMS and just the ambulance side to people as well. There's a lot of opportunity either way you go. And another aspect that you can look at as a career for EMS is in the emergency department. Also, EMTs and paramedics are now working for orthopedic surgeons. They're working in the emergent care clinics. They are working on specialty teams for like events and so on. And we'll talk more a little later about some of the potential pathways you have available to you. Now, licensure requirements is very important that you understand the requirements for licensure. Because in order for you to be able to function or perform as an EMT in a professional manner, you have to be licensed. Just remember, the state is the entity that determines who is licensed and who is eligible for licensure, and they're the ones who regulate licensure uh, of EMS personnel. Most states require you to have a high school diploma. Uh, other states require you to have background checks. Some states, just about all states, are going to a required background check and required fingerprinting as well, a valid driver's license, and proof of immunizations against certain diseases. Now, I know I've had it where I've had students come in and they did not want to participate in immunizations and when I was working at the technical school I could allow them to come in I could not deny them from working or being a student however most of the clinical sites would not accept them so that means that they could not complete the program so it is important that you look at these requirements when you're trying to decide what you want to do. So if you do not believe in or you do not want in immunizations, 
that may limit where you can work and what you can do. Because most places nowadays require immunizations, especially against the flu. A lot of people have this thing about the flu vaccine and they are against it, but some employers require it and if you don't get it, well then you don't work. All right, so in order to become an AMT, you must be certified in BLS. You must attend a state approved. Now that's very important. You want to make sure that whatever program you attend is state approved. And this program is approved by the State Office of EMS in Georgia. You will be uh, eligible to take the National Registry exam at completion of the program. You want to make sure you know what state approved written exam here in the state of Georgia and in most states in the southeast in the area. Uh, the National Registry is required and you're also required to take a practical examination that is administered by the National Registry. You also have to certify and this is usually on the application that you submit to obtain your licensure that you are able to meet the mental and physical demands of the job and also like here in the state of Georgia you also have to certify that you are not dependent on alcohol and drugs and there are certain felonies that can keep you from obtaining licensure as well and one thing you have to be careful with is your driving history because as an EMT one of your main responsibilities is to drive the ambulance. It doesn't matter all levels, paramedics, EMTs, EMT intermediates, advanced EMTs, cardiac technicians, we all at some point usually end up driving an ambulance and you need to be insurable. So if you have several DUIs, you have several speeding tickets or whatever, that may keep you from getting a job in certain areas or for certain services. That's up to the service for those things, for like your driving history. Um, there are still opportunities out there because you can work in an emergency room or a clinic, and there are some services that are very lenient as well. So it doesn't preclude you, but those are things that you may want to keep on the back of your mind there too. So the National Registry is the exam that I know the state of Georgia uses. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, South Carolina will accept the National Registry and North Carolina will accept the National Registry. Alabama accepts it. I'm not sure about Tennessee and Florida. I believe Florida will allow you to take their exam. You'll need to check with each individual state if you're planning to go to another state to work. However, there is a link on the course page that you can contact the state offices and find out. However, the National Registry is good for two years and during that two-year cycle you will have to take continuing education, typically about 72 hours worth of continuing education which includes a refresher course or equivalent. It has to be state approved continuing education hours and then you have to take additional continuing education hours. I would recommend once you become nationally registered, keep the national registry. You never know what you may do or what opportunities may come up and national registry can help you advance in your career. It has me. I've been nationally registered my entire career. I do not plan on letting it go and it has helped me. I've moved from Colorado to Alabama to Georgia to North Carolina and I've been able to maintain my national registry for that and because of that it's made it's allowed me to be mobile in my career so the Americans with Disabilities Act now this will protect people with disabilities from being discriminated against however there are some things that you know the ADA does not protect you against you still have to be able to perform the functions of the job and um, you need to check with each state to see what provisions or what requirements they have for you to do the job. So states may exclude certain people from AEMT certification such as those convicted of certain felonies. Uh, that is 
a very uh, um, hot topic that for a long time people had criminal offenses were allowed to work in EMS and in fire and we are in a position of trust where the patient and the community has to trust us and we have to be able to show that our personnel are of trustworthy status and the felonies there are certain classes of felonies that you cannot have most of them are felonies against people like like abuse like sexual abuse sexual predators and stuff like that so you'll have to check with your state office for more information on what they will accept and what they won't well that concludes this part of the, uh, the lecture this is chapter one part two and we'll see you for chapter one part three thank you